Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today we're going to be taking a look at this guy here, the DA62. Now, um, we're going to be looking at the mod specifically, which I thought I had already installed until one of my viewers said that it wasn't there. And I could have sworn that I installed it. I was like, no, no, the package had to be there. And uh, they were like, no, no, it's definitely not there. there. There are things that are missing. And so I'm like, all right, well, let me go double check. And sure as heck, it was not. I had it downloaded and had it in the directory, but it was zipped. So um, <laughs> you're right. The mod was not, in fact, there. So I figured today we would go ahead and check it out. Um, now, there are some issues with my terrain lately, and I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, everything is getting really flattened. Like, I'm losing a lot of the three-dimensional textures that I would expect to see, but uh, it's like all those buildings right in this area here. So, forgive me for that. That's something that I'm going to have to battle another time. But I figured we would sort of just see where things were at with the current... Um, uh, default version and then move our way over into the mod so this is without the mod okay we're just flying with the default aircraft here you guys can sort of see how everything looks here we're using the G1000 suite we will also have the G1000 mod installed as well um, so and it's actually installed right now so that's something to keep in mind as well um, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what are some of the features that the DA-62 mod brings to the aircraft, all right? All right, so here is the mod link itself. Um, this will be down in the description below if you guys are interested in giving it a shot. Um, it's a fun little aircraft. I flew it briefly, apparently the default version, when uh, attempting to do a VFR flight that was initially planned for the Mooney and things went south with the Mooney. Um, so we just sort of threw this one in there. Um, but so this time we're actually going to be doing a quick review of the whole thing. Um, here are some of the features that we see with this mod, and a lot of them are pretty neat. I mean, some definitely major improvements. Um, the propeller RPM will follow a set curve like the real plane, so that's nice. Um, I have noticed that the throttle input is really weird um, in the default version. Uh, proper fuel, plow, fuel flows, um, you know, increased thrust scaler, that's good. Um, the big ones that had my attention were the flight model. Uh, correct cruise speeds, reduced elevator and rudder sensitivity. I have noticed that um, when I flew it that last time, it was really, really touchy um, to an almost frustrating level. Um, and then, uh, let's see here, the in-flight handling characteristics all around, that's nice. Um, that's another one, like I said, real touchy aircraft. Um, I didn't feel like it should have been the way it was. Decreased ground friction and turn radius. I'm really hoping this has to do with the uh, taxi. Um, in order to taxi the default aircraft, I mean, you got to go almost full throttle um, to get it to start moving. Once it gets moving, it seems okay, but like you have to go max power to get that thing moving. So I'm hoping that affects that. Um, increased flap, lift, and drag. That's excellent. Uh, gear drag and trim deflection so this is this is pretty good stuff um decreased trim deflection so we'll get uh, more finer input uh the systems completely redone the anti-ice systems and endurance functional ice light i haven't really worried about that too too much i haven't seen a lot of need for it at, in the little bit that i've flown it but um just started pointing out some big ones here um improved autopilot pids and limitations that's awesome um and then the visuals, improved volumetric lighting and added metal landing uh, or leading edge uh, and empty logo to the static uh, prop. So that's pretty cool. Um, I always love seeing graphic updates. And then you got a couple to do's, which is nice to see. Uh, flight model correct performance all around. Redo everything. Full G1000 FADAC integration. Awesome. And a lot more. Uh, issues. Ice light is on by default and some mild incompatibilities with on air. So it doesn't sound like anything that I would call game breaking. All right, so let's go ahead and get this bad boy downloaded. Once we have it downloaded, we'll be presented with a folder that looks like this. So if we come back, this is the folder that is downloaded. This is the folder that is extracted. We open that up. Let's grab this guy right here. We're going to cut, and you guys are going to watch me this time put it into the Darren directory. And let's go ahead and throw it in. All right, and just to verify the contents inside. Yep, this is what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and relaunch the simulator. All right, so now we are in the modded aircraft. 
Let's go outside to the showcase here and take a peek and see if we notice any major differences. Nothing that jumps out at me. Whoa, sorry. There we go. Alright, so let's see. I mean, it looks fantastic, so I, mean, I, I guess there's nothing that's crazily striking to me, but, um, I mean, it looks great. The reflections are awesome, but again, I don't really have much of an issue with any of the default aircraft. I think, as far as visuals go, there isn't a whole lot that needs to be done with them. So let's go ahead and get in the cockpit. And let's see what we got here. Again, no major differences here. I think most of what we're going to see is going to be performance-based, so let's go ahead and get the engine started and see where we're at. Get fuel going here. Electrics on. Parking brake is set. Go ahead and kick the fuel pumps over for a minute. All right, sorry about that. The boss came home. So let's see here. Let's do the master on. I probably flooded this engine by now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, totally flooded. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Nice. All right. Let's get old number two running. There she goes. All right. So I'm not going to waste too much time here. We're just going to get her taxiing out and see what happens. By the way, did you guys know, if you hit shift P, like the pushback command, he comes up here and starts pushing you around? Just thought you guys might want to know that. Anyway, I didn't know that. So, let's get out of here. There we go. Uh, where are our lights for this bad boy? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, we need our alternators on. That'd probably be helpful. The Onyx Master would be good. Pedo Heat. Take off flaps. Instrument lighting, okay. Taxi lights, position lights. Ponder code there. By the way, I'm using a stream deck to control all of my autopilot functions and comms and everything. So you got your comm radios, nav radios, transponder, and all pilot functionality. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing what it looks like, check out the link in the description below. It will have a link to the video um, that goes through how to set that up. It's a really neat piece. I've had people already saying that they're buying the stream deck. Uh, just to have this functionality, so highly recommend that, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and release the parking brake and get out of here and see how this goes. All right, so one of my and it's already starting to move, which is so comforting to me. That's so comforting to me. So remember, I told you guys that previously with the default version, I had to go max power to get this aircraft to start rolling. So let's see what we get. I just had to put my foot on the brake because I already saw it moving. So here we go, foot's off the brake, adding a little power. And we are moving. Sorry, Fred, you're standing in a really bad spot, buddy. Hey, yo, um, hey, legs, legs, legs. I am so sorry. I'll tell your wife it was your fault. All right, so let's see here. There's a lot of traffic over here today. Forgive the camera movements. I'm not using track IR, as I said. We're just, just using the mouse here.
It's a little awkward. Okay, so already I'm almost taking the wing off on a bus. Um, very impressed with the taxing. Um, the wheels feel quote unquote better, if that makes sense. I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. I get it. It's a 2D monitor, but I hope you guys understand what I'm getting at. Um, the rolling seems better. Rudder response seems more about what I would be expecting. And the wheel friction, you can tell, has been changed because as I rotate, the aircraft slows down pretty dramatically. So that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and keep taxing out here. Throttle seems a bit weird for engine performance. So let's. I don't know why the alternators are failing. All right, so let's just do a quick run up here and sort of just we'll listen to what we get here. Now, I'm not quite sure what that's about, here linking the engines throttle down and throttle up based on engine RPM. What I would guess, and this is, this is where my education um, still has, has some work, right? I have a lot to learn still. My guess would be there's an automatic prop control or pitch control on the propellers based on the position of the RPM. That would be my guess. And that would actually absolutely make the sound of the engine change. Maybe someone who's wiser than I can confirm that in the comments below. That would be awesome. All right, so now we're going to get this girl going and see what we wind up with. We're looking for about 65 knots on the rotation. We'll get the gear up. underneath the red line there definitely should have put some left trim into this some of those sounds are new there we go pulling back positive rate gear up Hundred knots flaps up. Good climb rate, still accelerating. Weather effects seem nice. It is a windy day here in Tucson, so assuming that the sim is actually um, implementing that. Controls feel good now. Um, that takeoff was very nice. Um, it felt better. It, didn't f it felt more controlled, I guess is the better way to say it. I forgot to turn my strobe light on. As usual, like I said, the graphics look fantastic, but I don't think I've found an aircraft where it doesn't, honestly, in my opinion. Some of you may, uh, may uh, have different opinions on the subject, but and that's obviously perfectly fine.
The engine performance seems more manageable. We're gonna start pulling off a bit. So it definitely looks like there's, I'm guessing there's an electronic engine control because as I pull the RPMs back, it's pulling it right back. But so, got our RPMs here. This must be pitch and torque. Although it's affecting the fuel flow, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but. Now let's check out the trim. So I'm gonna go hands off for a moment. So we're in a little bit of a nose down. So come a nose up. Seems a little better than what was default. Um, I still think the response when you hold the trim wheel down, see if it's responding here, there it is, okay. So there's our trim wheel rolling. So it definitely seems to make a bit better sense. I did tap that quite a bit, so that was my fault. engage the autopilot 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 controls seem to make sense which is nice and it doesn't do and again I'm not looking to demonstrate configuration how I mean you got your rotaries here I can um, Oh, okay, that was my fault. I held it. So what I'm looking for here is... Alright, so here's our heading bug. So I'm going to move my heading bug around. And again, we could do that. The reason why I'm using my uh, stream deck here, guys, because... I hate dealing with the mouse, but like here's our heading rotary here and here. So if we just move this around, slowly you'll get slow increments. Rapidly you'll start getting the larger increments. But see, that's why I don't like using this. See how it does this? If you move your mouse just even slighter, slightly off the controls. So I'm just doing the same thing the functionality already has in the aircraft. I'm just doing it with my stream deck here. activated the heading control. I don't know why my terrain is doing this. Like it's washing out and getting all flat now. But if we go into my graphics setting, let's check that real quick. I'm not going to mess around with it too much. I just happen to notice it. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, global rendering quality. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Object level of detail. Terrain level of detail. Where's my terrain level of detail? Let's try that one. I'm going to move it, hit apply, and I'm going to put it back and see if that doesn't make it regenerate. I'm not sure why it's not regenerating. See, like all these buildings down here are really flat, but, and I don't remember them being like that. I think that's a new development. Anyway, so the overall performance of the aircraft so far seems absolutely awesome. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start leveling us out. Actually, let's take it down to 3,000. And we'll see how the landing goes. I'm not sure what happened to my city here, man. So many of the buildings are washed down. I wonder if it's the third party maps that I have installed. I wonder if they're causing a problem. I'm gonna have to 
test that because I swear that wasn't like that before. All right, so what's our airspeed? 118, 120 knots. Not too bad. We're a little low, but let's go ahead and start shutting down the uh, autopilot. So coming off autopilot. I'm at 120 knots, we're gonna go ahead and go flaps. Throttle definitely seems a little weird. It's a little weirder you're used to. The stick is still a little on the sensitive side, but right now we have gear down to full flaps, so I mean some of that may be to be expected. Like I said, it's definitely a bumpy day here in Tucson. I'm really low for the approach. has a halfway decent view there. God darn it. It's really dumb when you export the camera control windows and that's what I clicked in and because of that I didn't have control of the aircraft. It's like I'm still obviously talking to the simulator. Like I said, it is a bit of a windy day. It looks like we've got a bit of a crosswind today. So I will say, feathering the throttle seems very odd in this aircraft, and maybe I'm doing it wrong. It's absolutely possible. Maybe you're not supposed to in this kind of situation. But it just, the input is back and forth, back and forth. So it's making the landing really weird. Oh, a little lag. There's that crosswind pushing us over there. There we go, that seems to make a bit more sense here. Dance those wheels. Dance, dance those wheels. All right, 
There we go. Okay. So, all in all, um, final thoughts here for the moment. Flying it, I feel like it's going to be fun. Uh, the... What I'm assuming, and I'd have to do some research on it, and honestly, I probably should have before um, the flight, is uh, there's got to be some sort of electronic pitch control going on here. Um, and that would explain why the torque keeps changing based on the RPM. Um, so, and that's cool. That would make sense. Um, landing it was a bit weird, but I'm very, I'm fairly confident I was doing something wrong. Um, in the aspect that uh, maybe I'm not supposed to be feathering the throttle quite as much because it was definitely causing some very weird behavior um, in the uh, proper spots, right? Um, and so I was probably fighting a system that, you know, I shouldn't have been fighting. Um, so with that being said, I will absolutely be trying this aircraft again. I absolutely think the mod work is a lot better. I mean, just the fact that I was able to taxi away from the parking spot without going to maximum throttle was, um, a big improvement for me. Um, so anyways, let me know what you guys think in the, uh, comments down below. I really hope you guys try this one out. It's a fun little bird. Um, and, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.